Hey guys, what's going on? It's Josh here from One Track Mind, and today we have something very important to discuss. As you can probably already tell from the thumbnail and title, today we're going to be discussing the new upcoming artist, Pop Smoke, and his position in hip-hop. Before we start off this video, I just wanted to give a little disclaimer by saying that I have nothing against Pop Smoke whatsoever, and I actually am a fan of his and everything that he's doing for the New York music scene. That being said, it's time to get into the actual point of this whole video. Pop Smoke may be an industry plant. In case you don't know what an industry plant is, the Urban Dictionary does a pretty good job at defining it. They say that an industry plant is an artist who has a major or indie label backing their movement, presents themselves as a homegrown startup label to create pseudo-organic following. Some artists are well known for being industry plants, kind of like Ian Dior, Baby Goth, and Jumex. But others fly under the radar, despite quite obviously being plants, like Travis Scott and Don Tolliver. Pop Smoke's case is pretty similar to one like Ian Dior's. So let's dive right into it. Let's start by listing the facts. Fact number one. In an interview with Tim Westwood released on December the 5th, 2019, Pop Smoke said that he only started rapping a few months ago, yet he's already signed to Republic Records. Republic Records is a major record label that is responsible for the careers of artists like Post Malone, Lil Wayne, and Nicki Minaj. Fact number two. In that same interview, he also says that before his breakout hit, Welcome to the Party, dropped, he only had three songs out. NPR, Flexin, and Meet the Woo. Fact number three. According to Genius, Pop Smoke's first ever release was a song called OK OK, featuring French Montana, but since its release, it has been removed from all major streaming platforms and can now only be found on SoundCloud and YouTube. Now separately, these facts do seem pretty sketchy, but if we piece them together, there's something off about this whole thing. Let's start with his record label signing him. If we go on YouTube, the only release that we can see by Pop Smoke prior to him signing with Republic Records is for his single, NPR, which is now sitting only at 3.3 million views. There are artists all over the world who receive a couple million views on YouTube, but have no major label support. A good examples of these are Yellow Pain and Trap Durrell. On top of that, Republic Records isn't a stranger to these industry plants. On their roster, they have both Baby Goth and Blueface signed, two of the most obvious industry plants that there are. Everything so far with this record label seems to be kind of shady, but let's check out a little bit more of the artist's history before we can come to any conclusions. Popsmo claimed to have started rapping a few months ago in an interview that took place on December the 5th, 2019. In that same interview, he also admitted that before music became his main sources of income, he made his money through drug dealing and scamming. According to Genius, his first ever release featured French Montana, but can now not be found on any major streaming platform. Now let's think about this logically. A guy who grew up in the streets and had to commit a legal crime to make a living decided to buy a feature from a multi-platinum recording artist which probably costed him anywhere between fifty and hundred thousand dollars, and then later decided to just scrap that song completely from the platforms where he would make his money back from that release? None of this seems to make too much sense to me, so here's my take on everything altogether. One day Republic Records realized that none of their industry plans were really taking off like they expected them to, and that their New York artist catalog was starting to become a lot weaker, with Rich the Kid falling off, Nicki Minaj contemplating retirement, and Casanova just being old. As a result of that, the idea of creating a new popping plant out of the New York scene came to them. They found Pop Smoke, signed him, and bought him a feature from French Montana. The French Montana feature didn't quite pop off like they wanted it to, so they decided to shelve that artist, not allowing him to release much music anymore. He eventually got the label to agree to make a video for and release his song, NPR, which showed numbers that indicated some potential that he had. Following that, the label decided to invest in him again, with a Travis Scott feature tease and three more singles. Of those singles, Welcome to the Party took off, and we now have the pop smoke that exists today. And yeah. That's pretty much it for today's video. Do you think Pop Smoke is an industry plant? Let me know down in the comment section below. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you wanna see more dope hip hop content. You can also follow us on Facebook and Instagram for daily hip hop videos. And check out our Spotify playlist if you need some new music in your rotation. All our links are down in the description below. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.